Hey everybody, with the release of Final Fantasy VII bringing new fans and old fans alike back to the series, I thought now would be the perfect time to get a review for the Season Pass of Final Fantasy XV up. Now with the Season Pass, you get the Holiday and Booster Pack, which for the most part, part is just cosmetic and not really worth talking about. You also get three DLC episodes and that's where the bulk of this review will be spent. Each episode takes place at a point where the character has left the party. I've tried to keep all footage down to the opening sections as well, just to kind of not spoil anything for anybody that might not have purchased the season pass. With that being said, let's jump right in. First up, episode Gladiolus, and that is what's on the screen right now. I feel that here, it's a definitely a unique style of gameplay. It mostly resembles almost that of a hack and slash type action game, building up your berserk meter with, by, by constantly attacking your enemies with a whole parry system as well which is almost like something off Sekiro or Dark Souls. Sadly I felt that the story here felt very short, it didn't really flesh Gladio out and it kind of felt a little bit tacked on. You also notice that with the environments, you know, in a game where they spend nearly every every waking moment showing you something that's eye-catching and beautiful that in this one you're just in a st stuck in a dark dingy cave it looks very closed in and there's nothing really appealing to look at once complete you unlock a bonus score attack mode where you really just test your might to see how fast you can get through that dungeon that's what that score meter is on the top right hand corner of the screen by the way i'm doing a score attack here Now, it's probably worth mentioning that at certain times throughout this whole episode, there can be multiple enemies on screen, and I found that the frame rates didn't suffer at all, and that's probably something due to the fact that the game's a few years old now, and they've, they've, they've corrected some of those uh, issues. However, the targeting system for this episode is still an issue, and I feel like this has been an issue throughout the whole of Final Fantasy XV's release you know the, the targeting and being able to get the the correct thing up on the screen and attack it at the right time next up episode prompto here we get to experience some gameplay from the gunto and optimist of the group that finds himself separated from the group in an enemy territory now i feel of all the dlc this is probably the one that shines for gameplay and story being able to sneak up on an enemy and do a stealth kill or go in loud with an SMG or even a bazooka. I mean, a bazooka in a Final Fantasy game. Come on. That, that's, that's something special. I feel that with a little, fine, little bit of fine tuning, <laughs> we could have even been going for a, a real third person shooter here. My time clocked in at around two hours. After which you unlock an intensive training mode where you get to fight against your comrade Aranea. Uh, it's almost like a really intense boss battle. She kept absolutely kicking my ass. Um, followed by some time trials where you have to race down a mountain on your snowmobile, collecting boosts as fast as possible. Here we get to see some uh, beautiful, vast landscapes, which kind of brings that beauty back to the, the whole Final Fantasy. We also get to see some nice character designs, uh, especially with those bosses. Um, my brother particularly was kind of impressed when he was watching me on Twitch, and he, he didn't think that you know you get what what you know we kind of saw on screen at that point in time. Um, you even get like a, a bullet hell chase sequence as well, and that I, I really enjoyed that, and I felt that that was something special. Um, where this whole episode shines particularly outside of gameplay is with its story and we get some well deserved character building for Prompto, filling in some of the blanks for what happened in the story and we always kind of got an idea that he had some sad origins but we never got to know or understand really what was going on with him. Outside of the shooting mechanics, I feel that the melee mechanics 
again, it's it's a recurring theme for this Final Fantasy title. It's the, 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 the melee mechanics is really kind of the bulk of the gameplay. It goes very, very clunky again. Um, it's, it's, it's really been a problem for this Final Fantasy title. Next up, episode Ignis. This episode opens during the city's evacuation efforts whilst being separated from Noctis and the group. During this DLC, you find yourself having to win specific parts of the city, almost in a, uh, a whole mini game sequence. So you have to retake that area back from the Empire. And I felt that that was quite interesting. And again, it offered something that was a little bit different to what we had experienced so far throughout the game. Combat again is a little bit similar to that of the main game, except you can switch each elemental attack on your daggers, going from flame daggers to you know to a lightning dagger where you can zip, zap, and zop all the way across the screen like a lightning bolt. And that's something that I felt that was quite specific to <laughs> Ignis, and I thought it was absolutely amazing to be honest with you. You felt untouchable. Yeah. You also obtain a grappling hook which enables you to kind of get to higher areas so enemies can't get to you or also enables you to kind of get to areas where enemies are above you and you're able to kind of initiate a, a whole fight with them. One of the things that I did really find that I noticed as the episode went by, um, I felt that my thumbs was about to start snapping off. And it became a little bit of a <laughs> button mashing exercise, unfortunately. It does feature some really nice cutscenes, setting the tone for some of the events that happened in the main story. Again, I'm not going to tell you any spoilers, but it accomplishes what it's out to do, filling in some of the gaps in the story, fleshing out Ignis as the voice of it reason for the prince. Now, one of the things I do have to mention in summary for all of these episodes is they do serve a purpose of fleshing out the group and telling missing parts of the story, making this kind of unskippable content for anybody that enjoyed Final Fantasy XV. My problem is with that is that it's unskippable content and it's downloadable content as well. If you want to experience everything that Final Fantasy had, then you, you unfortunately you have to kind of get the season pass because the main campaign doesn't fill in any of the blanks. There's certain sequences where characters die and one of these characters, one of these episodic characters, see what happened. But unfortunately, you don't get to see that in the main story. So it's a little bit tacked on and it feels a little bit forced. Unfortunately, if they're storyboarded for that, then they should have had a way around experiencing it in the main campaign, not having to force you into buying the whole DLC. Anyway, if you like this video and have any feedback, please leave a comment. The whole <laughs> bro scheme review thing is kind of a change of pace for this channel. And I'm eager to hear what people's thoughts are. Thanks everybody, and stay safe during this whole outbreak nightmare. Okay, see you guys. Thanks. Bye.